Okay, so hi all. I'm Steve Leake. I'm part of the uh, user engagement group. Uh, I'm one of the people who responds when you send a ticket into uh, help.nurse.gov. So a little bit about getting connected to NERSC. A quick uh, look around the room. How many people have already successfully logged on and done something? The majority, actually. That's uh, good. So there are a few other options that you may or may not have seen yet. So uh, this morning we'll go quickly through uh, some of the options that you have for connecting. A few words about multi-factor authentication and how to use it. So Clayton already said a, a little about that before. We'll touch briefly on the perennial question of I forgot my password. Uh, and then a little bit more detail about some of the, the uh, key uh, options for connecting, which is through NX, also called No Machine, and SSH. All right, so when you're connecting to NERSC, this diagram's uh, become a little bit simpler in, the, in, in recent months since Edison retired. You will mostly be connecting to our primary machine over here, which is Cori. Uh, it has a number of file systems available to it, which are also variously available to the outside world. And um, over on the right-hand side here, you can see there's a couple of ways of connecting. Some of them involve going through your web browser, some of them involve going through a terminal program or client. Um, connecting is also a little bit separate to moving data around. You can move data around with um, SSH through the same means that you connect. Um, but you can also move data around separately from your connection. Uh, that can be quite useful when you're moving a large amount. So first of all, multi-factor authentication. So in our case, multi-factor authentication means your NIM password plus a one-time password that you get from Google Authenticator, uh, generally on your phone. Uh, we do have an alternative sort of backup option, which is handy if you, uh, you forgot your phone, for instance, uh, or if you change phones, having a, a plan B is quite useful. And that's uh, Authy on the desktop, which you can download from Authy.com. Uh, the, the benefit of multi-factor authentication is that because your password is no longer enough, it's much harder for somebody to hack your phone. They've got to know your password, uh, to, to hack your account. They've got to know your password and be in possession of your phone or your device. And at NERSC it's now mandatory, uh, though ex uh, exemptions are possible in special circumstances. Uh, I don't like it, it's not a special circumstance. <laughs> so a quick look of... Um, what it looks like and how you go about connecting through MFA. So using the shibboleth systems, this is things like help.nurse.gov. You go to the web page, you'll see a place for a login name and password. You type those in. In this example, we're using Authy on the desktop. This is what it looks like. So we type in the password, we click next, and then the system will ask for the one-time password. This is exactly the same as what you'll see when you look at Google Authenticator on your phone. So you copy the numbers or you transcribe the numbers into this box. And presto, you're into the help system. There we go. So uh, that's how you log in using the Shibboleth systems, which covers a lot of NERSC sy systems. Not Everything is in that uh, setup yet. So a few things like uh, Jupyter and RStudio. You'll see a, a login screen that looks a little bit like this where you've got three boxes on the same screen. It's fairly obvious. Username goes in one, NIM password goes in the next, and the MFA token from your phone goes in the third one. My NERSC is similar. Um, and things like SSH and NX are a little bit different and we'll uh, cover them in a bit more detail shortly. All right, very important. I forgot my password, or yeah, something went wrong and I can't log in. Most of these problems you can solve for yourself by going to nim.nurse.gov. And uh, in fact, do that. If you've got a web browser open at the moment, point it at nim.nurse.gov. And what you'll see is, again, on NIM, you have the 
the three boxes, username, password, MFA, but there are some links down the bottom here. Particularly useful ones are reset your NIM password. So you'll need to do that once every six months in any case. Um, forgot your username. Lost your tokens. So if you don't have your phone, for instance, or you've, you know, you've changed phone, something's, uh, you know, something's changed, you can't get in with MFA anymore, you can follow the prompts through the lost your tokens link to uh, get to the next steps for that. All right, so ways of connecting to NERSC. We'll talk a, a little bit about uh, some of the options uh, available through the web. So next exercise in the same browser window or a new tab pointed at my.nurse.gov. So you'll notice that there's a few .nurse.gov sites. Um, www.nurse.gov is kind of our front page that tends to be static information about NERSC. As users, the ones that you'll most use are my.nurse.gov, which is kind of dynamic live information about NERSC and your account. So if you've pointed your browser at it now, you should see something like this. Uh, a particularly useful thing is over here on the uh, left hand, right hand side of the screen is uh, a list of uh, status of different systems. And as you can see, this is a, a rather old screenshot that has a, a few systems that are no longer there. And it shows that everything's up. Other useful things, if you sign in, it will take you to the same sort of uh, you know, page with MFA as you've seen before. But once you've logged in, you can see things like you know, how you're going with your repo usage, what's your current balance, what have you used recently, what your disk usage is like, um, you know, whether you're coming close to quota, project disk, active jobs, you scroll down, there's a, a bit more. Um, and you know, this, um, this bar on the left-hand side here is worth exploring. There's you know, a lot of um, you know, useful and in interesting information about the state of the system. For instance, you can see things like, what's the queue wait time at the moment? A couple of particularly interesting ones from the point of view of connecting down here you'll see NX Desktop and Jupyter Hub. So NX uh, has a web interface as well as a desktop client. We actually recommend that you use the desktop client. Um, it's generally a better experience. Uh, but you can get to the web interface through my.nurse.gov. Um, you can also get directly to Jupyter Hub through my.nurse.gov. All right, so some more about NX, what actually is it? Um, it's also called No Machine. It's an accelerated X server. Um, so the terminology in X is a little bit around backwards to what uh, we're mostly familiar with. The X server is the thing that runs on your desktop or laptop, and the client is the program that's running at the other end. And the way it works is kind of like this. So you've got some GUI application, like your MATLAB, for instance, running on Cori. You've got a bunch of uh, windows for that GUI application, and those windows are being displayed on your laptop. And the X protocol is how the client, such as MATLAB, talks to the window manager on your laptop to you know, do things like uh, uh, report you know, mouse movements and button clicks and you know, screen updates and so on like that. The thing is that X is a really talkative protocol. It, it requires low latency and high bandwidth. Um, otherwise, the experience can be quite poor, quite slow. And this is fine if you're you know, in this building or on the lab and you're on the nurse network where you've got a fast, low latency connection to Cori. But for most people, that's not true. We're you know, off in other labs around the country or around the world. And you've got to go through the internet. And the internet is slow. <laughs> so we've got a big bottleneck here. NX helps this by running, we, we run virtual machines with uh, desktops inside of the nurse network. And then you can use the NX protocol and the NX client to connect to those virtual machines. So now when you're using NX, that talkative um, susceptible to slowness stuff is all happening on the fast network. And 
a much faster protocol is happening over the slow network. So you can get rid of the bottleneck. So summarizing, uh, motivation for using NX is that X windows are slow. Uh, if you try to open you know, even something like Emacs over a slow network, it can take several minutes. So NX will give you a much better experience if you're using GUI applications. The other issue with uh, GUI applications, and more than just GUI applications, <coughs> is that the internet isn't you know, especially reliable. And if your connection breaks, um, you know, that can cause you some uh, grief. You, know, you, you lose state. But when you're using NX, you're running on a desktop or a, a virtual desktop that's you know, running here inside NERSC. So if your connection here breaks, that doesn't actually impact your GUI programs. You can just reconnect to that session. So you've got a long running session that you can exit the session or you know, leave the session and reconnect without actually losing what you're running. So it means that it will survive uh, network breakages, as well as things that you, know, you need to kind of you know, run overnight, for instance. You want to shut down your laptop. OK, so how do you use it? Um, it will run on any desktop or laptop. Uh, there are clients for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And you know, if, you're, if you're really in a bind, there's also the web browser. The client is free. You'll be able to download these slides later and uh, click on these links to get it. Or you can just search for NX in this uh, box at uh, docs.nurse.gov. So that's another one, another good site to bookmark, actually, is uh, docs.nurse.gov. Lots of uh, documentation about using NERSC systems. You find quite often that when you have a question, uh, you can find the answer in here. So logging into NX with MFA is a little bit different to all of the other systems. And this is because it's a, it's a third party tool. Uh, we don't control what the login bo box looks like. And it doesn't assume on MFA. So with NX, you put your NIM password and your one-time token all in the password box with no spaces in between. Uh, because it's all in the password box and uh, it changes every 30 seconds, the one-time password, you don't want to save your password to the connection file. So make sure you uncheck this box and then when you log in, put your username, password plus MFA token. So, and finally, connecting with SSH. And actually, once you've already gone in with NX, you'll use SSH on the terminal to take the next step and, and attach to Cori, connect to Cori. All NERSC, NERSC systems, which currently means Cori, are accessible via SSH. You need some sort of a terminal program. If you use Mac or Linux, this is fairly easy. It's, uh, you, you have a terminal program already on your system. If you use Linux, chances are you already know all this. If you use Windows, there are a few more steps. You'll need to download some sort of a uh, application to connect. Putty is popular and quite usable. Um, you can also download XWin32, which has got a much bigger sort of suite of things. Or Git Bash is a nice client for it too. Another one that's not mentioned here is that if you go to jupyter.nurse.gov, uh, you can actually launch a terminal from Jupyter as well and that will take you into Cori. If you're going to use X, uh, X forwarding, which kind of happens automatically with NX, but if you're not using NX, um, you'll also need to have an X server installed on your system. Uh, in the case of the Mac, probably X quartz is the one to go with. And with Windows, the main options tend to be SIGWIN slash X, or um, I think it's called XMing32. Linux uh, is built in, you already have one. So when you SSH in, this is what it looks like. The text here is a little bit small, but so you have a, a prompt on your laptop. You type ssh-l my nurse username cory.nurse.gov. You'll see a big warning notice that yeah, this is a government system and terms and conditions essentially. And then you should see a prompt that says password plus OTP. 
and you do exactly what it says. You put in your NIM password and then the numbers that came off um, Google Authenticator or Authy directly with no spaces in between. And you'll see a whole lot more text, which if you stop and actually look at for a few minutes, uh, contains some useful information. Things like which systems are up at the moment, uh, which file systems are up at the moment. Most importantly, upcoming outages. This is good information to know. Uh, and past outages. So if you are using X forwarding, you need to add in this extra option dash Y. So SSH dash L, my username, dash capital Y, Corey.nurse.gov. Uh, once you've done that, you should be able to you know, load an X program such as you know, module load MATLAB. You can test it by running X term. Uh, that's a, a relatively lightweight uh, thing to test with. But once again, if you're using X programs, GUI programs, you're better off, generally speaking, using NX. OK, so here's a, a look at what uh, logging in with MFA looks like. So once again, we're using Authy on the desktop in this case because it's easier to show. Uh, we log in ssh-l, my username, corey.nurse.gov. See that bunch of text, password plus OTP. Type in password. Before you hit enter, go across to look at uh, Google Authenticator or Authy. Nope, those numbers are about to change. We've got new ones. Cut and paste or type those numbers in after the password. Enter. And you can see you'll need to scroll up to see all of the text, but at the bottom there's this useful planned outages section. So after you've done this a few times, you'll probably find that you're getting fed up with typing your password all the time, and particularly typing your password and getting Google Authenticator out. So we have a, um, a solution for this a tool called SSH proxy and what that gives you is a short-term certificate that you'll need to update once per day. So you only need to type in your password and your MFA once per day. And here's a demo on how to use that one. This demo is going to fly past a little bit faster because it's a little bit longer. You can take a, another look at it um, on the slide. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try again. So first you need to install SSH proxy on your system. So you can go to the NERSC web page, connecting to NERSC, SSH, look for installing the client, and cut and paste that line. It's a S copy, basically S copying it from Corey back to your desktop, into your terminal. You'll need to edit it to put your username instead of the word your username. It will ask you for your password and one-time password. You, you need this at first to, yeah, to set it up. So after you've done that, you now have um, SSH proxy on your desktop. If you uh, do a ls-l, you should see it. And if you run it with dash h, uh, it will give options that you can use. And some particularly useful ones is dash u and your NERSC username, because your NERSC username might not be the same as your laptop username, and dash a, which adds it to your SSH keychain. Um, yeah, that's quite convenient. Um, it means that now your laptop knows who you are at NERSC, so when you SSH in, it will automatically use the right thing. And then after that, uh, you can just SSH dash l, my username, corey.nurse.gov, enter, and the uh, key from the keychain from SSH proxy will take you straight through, and you shouldn't be asked for anything more. So one more quick uh, look at the landscape. So we've got a few methods via the web of logging in when it comes to actually, you know, doing most types of work, running, running jobs on Cori, you'll want to go in through a terminal. It'll take you into login nodes, into Cori, a bunch of file systems there as well. 
Uh, thank you all. Uh, are, are there any questions? Oh, uh, we'll fix that and make the video available. Oh. <laughs> uh, there are some notes also on um, docs.nurse.gov about it. Uh, there was another question. Um, so I was just logging in and I noticed that the bash RC file in our home directories is pretty old. Um, ah, yes. So for essentially historical reasons, um, the way that we have um, account bash RC and bash profile files is that we have kind of a, a site-wide one that everybody uses and that calls one called dot bash RC dot ext and dot bash underscore profile dot ext, ext like extension and those uh, you should have a template oh, in there okay. if you do ls dash la and you can go in and edit those and uh, yeah, add your personalization into those those files. Thanks. So the, actually for the audio, the, the question was the map shows a, a B scratch as well as a C scratch. So there are a few scratch file systems that um, a particularly JGI users use that are separate to Corey's uh, central scratch system. And they're actually implemented um, using the NGF file system. So, so they're in a, a different location. Uh, they have the same purpose. There's still a scratch file system intended for um, you know, for job IO. That so I have like, I'm from JDI, so I have yep. both. And then a colleague uh, from my lab wants to access my B scratch, but he can't do my device on a position, but it seems to be a hands on. If he puts the thing I create a directory in the C scratch, he can do that. So I suspect that I can do it. I'm not sure what's that. Uh, so that might be one to, we, we might uh, talk offline afterwards and uh, work out what's going on there. Yeah. Um, the NX, I didn't realize you could set up an NX desktop session. Uh, if, if I log out and log back in, do I maintain the same like UI state? Uh, if you close the desktop session, yeah. then your UI state will be you know, still sort of running. I think after, after a certain period of time, a couple of days or something, the, the, the VM gets reset. Um, but you can also, within the VM, you can click on kind of the, you know, the equivalent of the start button and log out of the VM and close the, the state. So, but then if I log back in, I mean, that's in the session. Uh, if you reconnect to the session, uh, if you actually logged out, you know, if, you, if you closed your um, NX, you know, not just the session, but the actual desktop, then, then you're logged out. So it's, it's kind of like a, you know, a virtual desktop that's running closer to NERSC 